Okay, everyone, so this is my tutorial for the Game of Chairs 2019 edition. Um, before we get started, let's take a look at what you're going to be creating. So to just summarize the project to get you familiar with it, um, it's you could you could break it up into a couple different parts. There is the this this thing which is called the astrolabe. So it's basically the sun thing, and so the uh, the titles on it. There's the main composition, which is this whole world. That's ninety percent of the project. And then there is the logo. So basically three parts to this project, if that makes it a little bit easier to wrap your brain around, because it's a fairly complicated project, but um, I think I made it in a way that you know anyone could pretty much tackle. So let's get started. So once you have all of your project files ready, the first thing you want to do is you're going to open up the After Effects project. When you first open it up, what you should have is um, three main compositions. There's main comp plus titles, and then beneath that is main comp plus astrolabe and logo, and then below that is main comp. So as you'll see, uh, for the main comp, it's just white. There's nothing loaded there. There's some flares and stuff loaded here, but that's about it. And then there's some titles. Um, because Element 3D doesn't have any way of automatically recognizing when a file is moved, um, it's going. You're going to have to relink the comp. You're going to have to relink the files, and it's a little bit tedious. But once you do it once, you don't have to do it again, so long as you don't move the files. So first things first, we go into main composition, and we go to Element. Hit. Uh, Start off with the universal render, hit scene setup. Now, what we want to do is relink the files and the textures. So we hit file, relink scene files, select folder, and then you just select wherever you have the game of chairs folder. Uh, so for me, it's desktop, game of chairs, and then you just hit the whole folder and then hit relink and close out give it a second and as you can see the texture is loaded now still not seeing anything and that's because we have several instances of element that we have to do this to unfortunately it's, it's again it's pretty tedious but once you do it once um, then you're set. So these are all separate instances of element. And so they're all referencing files separately. And so you need to link them all to the same folder where your files are in order for them to all recognize what they're supposed to be doing. So let's go to location A, scene setup. As you can see, the um, there are shape layers. A lot of the world in this project is based on shape layers um, that are created within After Effects, but all of the locations themselves, animations, were created separately outside of it, uh, outside of After Effects, and so they need to be imported. So as you can see, the red means it's not there. So let's relink scene files, select folder, Game of chairs, hit OK, relink, OK, close, give it a second. And as you can see, it just loaded. And it loaded with the textures already on it. Which is kind of nice. So that should have automatically done, it, that should have automatically relinked for all of the object files within this. So including the textures, so now the world is repopulated. Hooray. Hit OK. 
Oh, there we go. Okay. So, as you could see, our first location was loaded, but the rest of it is still empty. So we just have to go through all the locations and relink everything. Okay, when you have linked everything, you should have a world that looks kind of like this. So to just give you a basic overview of how Element works within this, uh, there is location A through I. Don't ask me what happened to location G. And each location is basically a country. Uh, so if we deselect location A, you'll see location A is gone. Uh, deselect location F, and there goes that country. So within each country is a focal point and that focal point is usually like a town or you know the capital or whatever it is you want to focus on and then the country is really just the land around it and then uh, together everything kind of forms up this world basically so if we went into location A for example you'll see it's broken into different pieces um, I don't know how well I organized these, I tried, but there's a lot of pieces here. So there's the country, which is made up of mountain ranges, uh, rocks, more rocks, and uh, text for the actual location, which you can change. So all of the world pretty much is based on shape layers. So you'll notice that in the custom texts and masks, there are, um, it's referencing shape layers, which are uh, hidden because <clears throat> there's a lot of them. So if we unhide them, we'll see all these, te all these uh, shape layers. So we'll just choose one of them and see it's just kind of a blob. You can change these to whatever shape you want so you literally have control over the entire world in this project. Um, I wouldn't recommend changing them just because uh, I think, it, I mean, it's fine the way it looks. And you could move, it, it would be easier to move stuff around within Element 3D than to change the masks for all the shapes and screw up the geography of the world. But you can if you want to. So going back into location A, there's the world and here's the text. The text is also uh, a custom text, a custom mask, which is referenced in the custom text of masks, which is. Text location A. See at the bottom of the at the bottom of the composition, there are um, a bunch of stuff you can edit, mostly titles and images. So, if we want to change the vault, we could change it to the the I don't know tree, and then when we go to where location A is, which I think is over here. We'll see that the text changed on the map automatically. So just to take a look here, there's the world. So there's the shape layers that you could change and move around however you want. There is the title, which you could change, and then there is this bridge. This bridge is an object animation sequence. So how this project works is uh, in the object folders, you'll, pro you'll probably notice that there's just a ton of object sequences. Objects are 3D objects 
that could be loaded within Element 3D. In this case, you can load a sequence, and it's basically an animation. So this bridge transforming, basically, is an object sequence, which, let's say it's object sequence 1 through 100. It's playing that sequence from the beginning to the end of it. So it's actually made up of several different object sequences that are all put together within Element 3D. So let's choose this part specifically. If we were to move the start frame, we could kind of see the transformation. We can see what it's going to do. We always want it to start on frame one and end at, you know, its ending frame, which in this case is 100. So the next thing to learn is the HD controller. So it's basically just a layer that is tied to the universal renderer. Uh, the universal renderer is a, let's see. So the universal renderer is basically what, what uh, decides the settings for all of the locations. All the locations are um, unified layers, or they're, they're rendered in unified mode. So if you add an extra instance of Element 3D, you need to make sure it's underneath Universal Renderer and that the setting for it is unified versus Universal, which is full render. Basically what that means is uh, all the locations reference universal renderer for their specific settings. So location A doesn't have a sun that is at sunset and location B doesn't have a sun that's at sunrise or location C is in draft mode and location D is in full resolution. It would just be confusing so they all reference universal renderer and universal renderer is connected to the controller HD layer. I've taken most of the important settings from the Universal Renderer and I've tied them to this controller just to make it easier for you to get to the settings you need. So if you hit Ambient Inclusion, Ambient Inclusion is turned on. Ambient Inclusion just gives it a nice soft shadow which makes the quality of everything look better I think. So if we take that off then let's see there's also there's a bunch of settings there is depth of field we could turn on and you'll see depth of field is turned on and that's tied to all the cameras for the different locations so it doesn't just turn depth of field on right here it turns depth of field on everywhere of the field. I'll turn that back off. Um, let's see. There's also shadows on and off. It's without shadows. This is with shadows. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that shadows, depth of field, and ambient inclusion specifically uh, are very graphic intensive. And so you want to turn them off until you're actually ready to edit or until you're actually ready to render because it's just going to take forever to render, basically. You also probably want to be in a quarter resolution versus full resolution. I mean, if you're trying to get specific you know detail details 
tied down, you could turn that stuff on. But I would strongly recommend turning off all these settings and not being in full resolution mode until you're actually ready to render, because then it's gonna just be it's gonna make your editing a lot easier. So let's see what else. Okay, so let's talk about the location controllers and how it all works. So let's start with something easy. What's an easy one for the sake of example? Uh, Alright, let's just do location A, that's easy. Now these aren't in order, location A isn't at the beginning, it's just kind of arbitrary where they are. And that was intentional because you can move the locations around in the timeline wherever you want. They don't have to be in alphabetical order, they don't have to go one after the other. You can do it in whatever order you want, and it's pretty easy. Um, so I've set it up in a way where all of the keyframes for the locations are tied to the layers, and so when you move them around, it's not going to create this chain reaction of issues. So let's take location A. So all you need for location A is, is cam location A and location A controller. So the camera, that's self-explanatory, it is the camera. I've had I have keyframes in it. So it's moving, it's moving around. Uh, it jumps to a different shot, but it's still the same camera. Okay, so you see how the camera works, and you can literally move that however you want. Just try to make sure that you know you. It, it's going to automatically be doing keyframes, so um, you know keep that in mind. So you can move the camera. As you can see, this isn't all like pre-animated. It's live. You can move the camera however you want but it is creating keyframes, so let's get rid of those. Okay, now it's back to normal. So what is making this animation move? So in this instance, because this is a fairly simple one, the object animation is cut up into two pieces. There's location object A and location object B. So the location controllers these are tied directly to element 3D, to its location, and to its group number. And specifically, it's referencing the start and end frame for the object animation. It all sounds really confusing, but it's not once you actually get into it. So basically, location A, object A, the keyframe starts at zero, it ends at 100. That is because there is 100 frames of that of that object animation. So you are literally going from frame 0 to frame 100 within these keyframes. That's all it is. So super simple. So let's say, let's do this really quick, just to show. So as you can see, it's just moving from frame 0 to frame... 15. If we move that keyframe up, it is now going within this second or two, it's going to be going from frame 0 to frame 100. So now let's see how it looks. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the connection between this controller and the animation. Um, if you want to move, like let's say you want to move the location, you can move the location. There's an expression I made that is connected to the location controllers, so it does not start or end until it goes from here to here. So you can move it, it's not going to, if you move that, it's not going to still start at frame 100. It's going to start when the timeline gets to this layer. So basically, all the animations aren't going to get screwed up if you move the order around. So let's say you want to uh, let's say you want to move you want to swap the order of two locations. So beyond the um, the location camera, there's also the transition camera, which I've highlighted in orange. The transition camera is self-explanatory. It's just going from 
location one to location two. This might not have been the best example to use because this actually has extra keyframes within it. So, but that's just to make the animation smoother. So ignore this for right now. So these keyframes are the starting keyframes. These are the ending keyframes. This is transition D to A. So this keyframe value is the position of location D. This keyframe value is the, is the position of, of location A. Now you can get these locations based on, um, okay, so if you unhide, all the locations have a null. So let's go to the map to take a look at what that means. All the locations have a null. So you see location B is there, location D is there, um, and that's just to give the central point of each country a actual physical position number. So location D, that's where it is. That's the position. So let's say we want to move stuff around. Let's, uh, let's start by copying location, location, uh, Let's say location D. We'll copy that. And we'll go back to location A. Now, the way I had the animation set up is it goes from location A to location F. So it goes from the vault to Grimfort. But let's say that you want to go from the vault to to uh, the wall. Let's say the starting position is the same because you are still starting from location A, but you don't want to go to location F. You want to go to location D. Now I just copied location D's position data from the null. So I'm just going to um, paste it here. Oops, I didn't paste the whole thing. Let's see. The anchor point, position, and orientation. So just copy that, hit Control C to copy, and then go in here, and that translates into point of interest, position, and orientation. So let's paste. So it looks a little wonky, and this is why. It is going straight there. As you can see, it's gone to the wall, but um, you still have to move it around a little bit. You s so this is gonna take a little bit of tweaks. So just move the camera. Probably want it focused on the town. Okay, so let's get rid of these old keyframes by moving them over. Let's hit the end point there. Start point is here. And you probably want to rename this something else too. So let's rename it location A to location D, because that's where it's going. So this is gonna take a second to load. So let's uh, come back once this is loaded. Okay, so the animation is cached out, so let's play it. Okay, so as you can see, by changing those keyframe datas, you can completely change 
the order of the animation. Now this is just this was a really simple change. Um, we can make that Camry look even better. Now because this is how I had it set up originally, uh, location F is going to be coming up next. Let's just move everything. Let's give us let's give ourselves a little bit of space. Let's move everything and let's take location D which starts over here let's take the camera and the controller and move it to right after location A to D now we want to line this up you may be wondering why the controller is sticking out a little bit. That is because, and this is optional here, we want the animation to start a little bit before the camera switches over. Otherwise it looks like, it looks weird. Like the animation is just starting. We want the animation to kind of smooth, smoothly blend into the next camera. So, Let's do a couple seconds here, a couple seconds here. Let's wait for that to load. Okay, so as you can see, I've created a brand new camera transition. It's now going from location A to location D. And when I've moved over the location D controller and its own camera, it just continues to play like it did before. Moving it around in the timeline did not screw up the keyframes, it didn't screw up anything. It is, you could rearrange stuff exactly how you want it. Okay, so I think you guys get the gist of that. We didn't really talk about actually editing the world. So since we're at location D, let's open that one up. So this is all basically just a giant Lego pile. You can rearrange stuff, you can connect this to that, do whatever you want. So let's say we wanna move that over here. We can move that over here. Let's say we want to um, get rid of like half the walls. We could get rid of half the walls. Let's say we want to change the texture. We haven't talked about texturing yet. Let's change the texture of the ice to uh, brick. Where are we? Move that over there. Nope, nope, that's the one I deselected. There we go. This should be interesting. Let's look at inserts. So an insert is where you can have even more customization. There's a couple different instances of inserts. So this flag with the cougar on it is an um, example of an instance. So you go, go to the bottom of the composition. So there's A, B, C, and F. So this is location E. So it's the location E insert. This is, uh, this is a texture file, which an element in location E is part of the custom text of masks or I'm sorry, the custom texture map. So it's right here. So you just make sure that's loaded. So in location E, we have the cougar. We can change that to whatever we want. You could put your own logo, you could put text. Um, let's change it to an octopus. The flag is now an octopus. And so when it animates,
when it animates, it is going to reflect the texture as well. Look at that guy go. Uh, your text here. Let's do that. As you can see, it is animating just fine. Uh, okay, let's move on to the parent comp, which is main comp plus astrolabe and logo. So basically, the main comp is here, and uh, kind of at the beginning is the astrolabe, and in the middle, and then at the end is the logo. So on the astrolabe, just like with the main composition, we have to relink the scene files because it's a separate instance of element. So let's we'll start with element foreground, hit scene setup, relink scene files, go to desktop, game of shares, relink, close. Okay, so here is the astrolabe. Uh, this white square, this white square is a custom layer. That custom layer is band one. So this is, you can change this. You can do uh, your text goes here. Let's flip that guy. As you can see, it's changed. So that's the foreground. Um, because the uh, the um, I didn't want the foreground to be blown out with the light from the background, I split it up into two copies. So just if that makes sense. So let's relink on element background, same thing, select folder, uh, desktop, game shares, relink. There it goes. Okay. So this is the background, this is the foreground. And this is it with the effects. So there is a wiggle that kind of moves the camera around. There is a f there's an optical flare that I have turned off. If you don't have that plugin, um, I've just made it a a video. For people that don't have that that uh that plugin, so flares, blurs, there's a heat wave that I've thrown in here. All of this is tied to the flicker adjustment, which is tied to the opacity. So you see how it kind of bobs in and out from around five percent to about ten, fifteen, twenty percent. Um, the higher the the higher the number, the brighter the flare and the more spastic and shaky the wiggle is and how much of the heat wave is applied. So just use this as a template. You can if you want it to be less crazy, you can cut out some of the the keyframes or you could lower their value. If you want more, then you could do more. Okay, and then you'll probably notice that when the map is zooming into the first location, there's a little uh, there's a little magnifying glass effect. That is also an element 3D layer, so we have to, you guessed it, 
Relink the scene files. Super exciting. Desktop, game shares. Relink. Close. Okay. Do that a few more times. Oops. That's not the right button. Let's wait for that to load. Okay, so Okay, so as you can see that magnifying glass effect is on there now. And then it's the same thing here. This is just a duplicate, so if you don't want to relink the scene files again, let's just duplicate these. And move that over. Get rid of the old ones. Load that. So yeah, same thing. And now that isn't actually magnifying it. There is a cut in the camera. So the very first camera is can, is transition zero to B. B is the first location it's going to. There's a cut right here. So keep that in mind. So if you move stuff around, um, you know, keep in keep in mind where the cut is. You could also just take this out altogether if you want. Okay, so that's the astrolabe, and then there's a second astrolabe here. Same thing, just relink the compositions or relink the uh, element 3D, same thing. Okay, so now the main logo. So same thing as before, we have to relink the compositions. So let's start here, element foreground, or relink the files. Again, once you do this the first time, you don't have to do it again. So it's tedious that I'm showing it, but um, you're done after that. This, this is a custom texture map. It is band three. And see it's changed. And then it's gonna go over to the main logo. So hit logo, element, Relink scene files. Stop. Record. Yep. Okay, so here's our main logo. As you can see, it's in 3D. Um, this is just text that you could change. Let's let's start off with that. So the text is right here, it's main logo title. So let's say, um, uh, game of hats. Actually, let's make a game of cats. All right, so see it's game of cats now. So let's go back to the logo. So you'll notice that there are four house sigils, 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 on each corner. Let's see where they're at. Yep, right there, right there, right there, and right there. These are custom masks. So. You'll see that they're all there, and they are referencing these compositions. So let's say the horse 
right there, horse. That is just the, that's hard to see. Uh, that's a little hard to see, so let's give a background behind it. Okay, so there is the horse. It's just an image, you could put your own image here. And you'll you'll notice that it's it has a mask around it. Um, all I did, let's get rid of the masks, was I took the composition and I hit auto trace, auto trace, and now it has a mask. So Element 3D is using that mask right there to be part of the logo. So you can swap these with different emblems that I've included or and put a mask around them or you could put your own thing just whatever you want to do or you could even just rearrange the order here let's see let's move that over there and move this over here and you can just flip that uh, flip that 180 degrees and then take the dragon where do you go Take the dragon, put him over here, flip him 180 degrees. And see, now it's changed. Okay, that's the project. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. Once you get past the relinking the object files and the textures, it's super easy. You can move the camera wherever you want. You can edit the world however you want. You could add mountains and you could take away the mountains. You could add rivers and you could um, change the text for everything. You could change the emblems for everything. You can do whatever you want. Oh, and last thing. So main comp plus titles. So all of this, all of what you've seen, and then over that is a layer of titles. And these are pretty self-explanatory. It's 1 through 37. I've done 37 of them. And so they just transition in, title, and then transition out. So um, you can change the banner to whatever you want. You can change the name. Uh, your name. Your logo. There you go. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, please, um, if you're watching the YouTube version of this, then leave a comment. Um, if you are watching the video that came with the project, then refer to my YouTube video so you can leave a comment and get in touch with me if you have any questions. Uh, you know, any issues or anything, just let me know and I will try to explain that. That'll do it.